In the last two lectures, we completed most of the portion related to remainder theorem and now in this lecture, we will discuss next case of remainder theorem. In this case, a number is having a large power is divided by some other number. So we are dealing with large powers. We are dealing with large powers. In this case, I will explain you one simple method by which you can easily solve this kind of problems. Now what if you want to calculate the remainder by first solving the numerator that is 9 raised to power 87 and then dividing it by 8. The calculations will be very lengthy and you will end up wasting your time. In the examinations you may have powers even larger than 87. So it is good to know this simple method to solve this kind of problems. I will write 9 as 8 plus 1. 9 is having the power 87 so 8 plus 1 will also have the power 87 divided by 8. Now you will ask me why I wrote 9 as 8 plus 1 why not 7 plus 2 6 plus 3. I will explain the reason by taking another example let's say 17 raised to power 87 is divided by 8. I will write 17 I will write 17 as 2 multiplied by 8 which is 16 plus 1 so this is how I will write 17 so you can see one pattern here we are including the number by which we are performing the division 8 and multiplied by some other number in the first case 1 is multiplied by 8 and in the second case 2 is multiplied by 8 and we always have the other term as 1. So this is how we are splitting the numerator and uh, by doing this we can directly write down the answer. From here the remainder will depend on the remainder of 1 raised to power 87 divided by 8. You can directly proceed to calculating the remainder of 1 raised to power 87 over 8. And in this case also we will do the same thing 1 raised to power 87 over 8. You don't have to worry about this first term. So we already know 1 raised to power anything is going to be 1. So 1 raised to power 87 will be 1. So we have 1 divided by 8 and the remainder of 1 divided by 8 is 1. So we can directly write down answer as 1 if we can break the numerator like this. In this case also we can directly write down the answer as 1. Now we will see the proof of this method but first I will generalize I will generalize this method. If you can express the expression in the form in the form bx plus 1 raised to power n over x then you can directly write down the remainder as 1. You have to remember this. Now we will see the proof of this method. Let's say we have x plus a raised to power n and we can write this as x raised to power n plus n c1 x raised to power n minus 1 a raised to power 1. The next term is n c2 x raised to power n minus 2 a raised to power 2 plus all the way to n cn x raised to power n minus n and a raised to power n and you can write the last term as a raised to power n so I will write it as a raised to power n only so this is the expansion and now I will divide x plus a raised to power n by x I will divide it by x so the right hand side also I will divide by x. Now if the first term which is x raised to power n is divided by x you are going to get the remainder as 0 because we are having x in the numerator. In the same way here we are having x raised to power n minus 1. When you divide it by x you will definitely get remainder equal to 0. In the same way you will get remainder equal to 0 for all the terms except a raised to power n. So the final remainder you are going to get will depend on the last term only. So what I can write? I can write when x plus a raised to power n 
is divided by x the remainder is going to be the remainder of a raised to power n by x I will write remainder of a raised to power n over x so in this way you can easily prove this method I will check the first example by using this here you can see we have 8 plus 1 raised to power 87 by 8 I will write 8 plus 1 raised to power 87 by 8 so 8 is x you can see 8 is x and uh, a is 1 n is 87 so the remainder is going to be a raised to power n a is 1 so 1 raised to power 87 because n is 87 divided by x x is 8 and the remainder you are going to get is 1 because 1 raised to power anything is equal to 1 and 1 divided by anything will produce the remainder equal to 1 so this is how you can have the complete explanation of this process. Now we will quickly solve few more examples related to this method. In the first example, 37 raised to power 19376 is divided by 9. Now you have to think how you can break 37 so that you have the form bx plus 1, right? So let's try to think about it 9 multiplied by 4 is equal to 36 and 36 plus 1 is 37 pretty simple so 4 multiplied by 9 plus 1 the power is 19376 19376 divided by 9 so we have this form and we can directly write down the remainder as 1 so remainder is going to be 1 this is the answer now what if you cannot directly obtain this form? The problem will be very difficult in that case. But if you think in correct direction, you can easily solve that kind of problem also. Let's take another example in which we will deal with such case. 9 raised to power 100 is divided by 7. Now if you try to break 9 in this form, you cannot break it because 8 plus 1 divided by 7 is not this form because we need 7 in the first term so let's try to break it like this 7 plus 2 raised to power 100 over 7 now if you follow if you follow this expansion you can clearly get the result in which the remainder will only be dependent on last term which is 2 raised to power 100 so the remainder will depend on 2 raised to power 100 divided by 7 and uh, I can write 2 raised to power 100 as 2 raised to power 99 multiplied by 2 divided by 7 2 raised to power 99 I can write as 2 raised to power 3 raised to power 33 multiplied by 2 divided by 7 2 raised to power 3 is equal to 8 2 raised to power 3 is equal to 8 so 8 raised to power 33 multiplied by 2 divided by 7 now I can write 8 as 7 plus 1 which is this form so we have 7 plus 1 raised to power 33 multiplied by 2 divided by 7 now we have two different parts and the first part which is 7 plus 1 raised to power 33 divided by 7 this part will produce the remainder equal to 1 so remainder is equal to 1 and the second part which is 2 divided by 7 you can easily calculate the remainder it is equal to 2 and the two terms are multiplied with each other so we will multiply the two remainders 1 multiplied by 2 and the result is 2 so 2 is the answer so this is how you have to proceed you have to perform various calculations or you can say you have to perform various simplifications to obtain this particular form and once you have this form you can directly write down the remainder equal to 1 like in this case and this is one example you can use it in various ways in your examinations we will uh, solve few more examples related to remainder theorem in the coming presentation 
but now we will move on to the homework problems we have two homework problems in this lecture and in both the homework problems you need to calculate the remainder in the first problem 25 is having the power 268 and it is divided by 8 and you need to tell me the remainder in the second problem 9 raised to 50 is divided by 7 and again you need to tell me the remainder once you have the two answers post it in comment section